Good morning. My name is Mike Blakely, and I am the CEO of the Marin Economic Forum, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the Marin Economic Briefing. Uh, the Marin Economic Forum is a nonprofit public benefit organization that provides research and analysis in support of Marin County's economic vitality. You can find out more about our work and subscribe to events like these by visiting our website at www.marineconomicforum.org. So welcome to the Marin Economic Briefing. Uh, these, this presentation is intended to do two things. Number one is share a set of key economic indicators that all economists, policymakers, and business leaders look at sort of a daily basis to try to make uh, judgments about the health of the economy and to do future planning. But these indicators are not all found in one place and they certainly aren't always easy to understand. So what we like to do uh, in these briefings is to collect and aggregate those and then contextualize them a little bit to help give the community an understanding of what's really happening in the economy. Second thing we like to do is to go over what we call the Marin Recovery Index. Uh, this is a set of key economic indicators specific to Marin County that we developed in order to be able to have some understanding of what's happening on the impacts of the coronavirus on our local economy. Um, these briefings are just that. We like to keep them to 30 minutes, let you get on with your day. But if you do have questions, we'll do our best to get to them and please put them in the chat box below. So to take us through all this information is uh, the MEF Chief Economist, Dr. Rob Eiler. Many of you have seen Dr. Eiler give other presentations around uh, the North Bay. He's widely regarded as um, the expert in the North Bay economy and we're lucky to have him on our team here at Marin Economic Forum. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Rob to come up and share his screen and take us through some of these numbers and let us know what's happening out there, Rob. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen and you can hear me and thanks for coming. And Mike, thanks for sponsoring this and keeping the uh, Marin Economic Forum in the front of what's going on in the county and in the region. Folks, for the next few minutes or so, I'm gonna walk us through where economists are watching closely uh, in terms of some of the basic data. And then also, as Mike said, our uh, recovery data tool to show you some things that are more specific about Marin County. So we had major losses in GDP in the second quarter, even though jobs have started to recover. And this is a global phenomenon that we're seeing generally in the West and in, uh, in Western Europe. But uh, Asia has recovered a little bit more quickly than we have. We're going to watch that closely as things go toward the end of the year. We're still watching jobs claims and economists have moved from initial claims and folks just getting unemployment insurance to those that have remained on there to think about the duration aspects of the recession. And I'll get back to that in a little minute in just a little bit. Uh, we're also watching tourism where Marin County has not got as large a footprint as let's say Sonoma and Napa counties do, but there certainly is one. And so it's also a way of looking at consumer confidence and the willingness of people to move around with respect to the potential threats of infection and also just thinking about wanting to get out of their homes. And that tension now is starting to show up more and more in terms of people moving around. And of course, the state and local uh, health officers are being very watchful to see if cases spike as we get closer and closer to the end of the normal tourism season. But we are seeing some pickup. The presidential election has not yet affected markets. Uh, if you're watching your equity portfolio, it is now at record levels again, but some of that could be at least on the margin, some irrational exuberance about what's going on. We will see, but generally September, October, November, well, it shouldn't take that way. September and October for sure have been nasty months historically in the market. And as we're getting more uncertainty about who's gonna win the election, you may see equity markets wobble a little bit, but it has been very fascinating to watch as our economy has reeled in recession that equity markets have picked up more quickly. Uh, the very little change in interest rates going forward. So in terms of the business environment going into 2021 and probably 2022, you should not expect much change in the cost of credit. The Federal Reserve talked about shaping expectations around what they're calling average inflation expectations or average inflation generally, uh, which is kind of a black box, -ish, box, -ish, box -ish way, sorry of thinking about inflation. There's really no true definition of that, but watch that the Fed is probably not gonna change interest rates for at least the next 18 months. And then finally, if you think about Marin County, we're watching very closely to see how social policy slowly unreels given the governor's uh, new statement about the way that uh, businesses can open back up and we really need to get those jobs back. And we're gonna see some data in a minute that at least shows us what's been happening through the 1st of August and potentially further on as we see some data about claims. Here's the latest forecast out of the Federal Reserve in Philadelphia that 
basically is like the blue chip forecast and it comes out every quarter. So that shaded area is the new income growth data coming out of these 40 forecasters looking forward for this quarter and then the next four quarters. And you can see that the growth from the previous quarter's forecast for that same quarter, which is the left-hand non-shaded column next door to that one that said 10.6 at the top, it's now at 19.1. So that's a really positive jump. Uh, and in fact, this, these data in terms of what were the expectations for the second quarter were very close to what the first estimate was. And the second estimate of GDP is now picked up a little bit for the second quarter. Not, it's still negative 31.7%, but at least it picked up from 32.9. And this one is now showing some of that continued positive momentum. In unemployment rates, there's also some positive momentum. You're seeing now that it was 12.9 was the prediction for the third quarter for the American economy now down to 10% by September 30. We will see how that plays out, but these two walk hand in hand. As unemployment gets smaller, growth should rise, but at some point growth will naturally peak as unemployment falls down because you're getting less on the margin for each new worker that comes in, comes back to work. But the, the critical factor is, is really in the annualized data. So on an annual basis, these forecasters are still predicting a negative year overall for the American economy which is somewhat of a rarity. It usually happens in larger recessions rather than smaller ones. And this has obviously been a relatively large, quick recession. But the quickness, the duration of it, if you think about labor markets going forward and look at these numbers, growth somewhat moderates at, as the 2021 year and through 2023, it looks more quote unquote normal, where unemployment is still relatively higher than it was in 2019. So if you use 2019 as a benchmark, the American economy is not yet predicted to come back before 2023. These forecasters are very close, like I said, and that path is now more, pessim more pessimistic, actually, believe it or not, in terms of the speed at which things are gonna happen. You'll notice in 2023, the unemployment rate is not as good as it was in the last quarter's forecast because they're expecting things to moderate somewhat as we go on in the next couple of years. Uh, but think 2022 or 2023 for a true American recovery. Looking at the states, these data are new as of, April, of August 21. The darker states are ones that have relatively higher unemployment rates. So the states right now that have under 5% are Utah, Nebraska, and Idaho. And those states are very close to where they were before COVID started. Part of that's because they haven't had as many cases on a, on a per capita basis. Nevada's way down on unemployment from where it was. And California is slowly rolling down. New York is still relatively high. Texas has gotten closer to where it was before COVID and Florida and Illinois, just as larger states go, are still over 10%. But in general, California is seeing more growth. There's other states that are still kind of moderate growth in terms of where they were. Uh, but for thinking about California going forward, we do need a national economic recovery to really speed our recovery up. And this is very similar to the way that the Great Recession unfolded in terms of the middle of the country being the first place where recovery happens in the coastal states still struggling to get out of the recession's shadow. As discussed, here's the latest on continued claims. This is through the 8th of August. The 15th of August is coming up in the next day or so, but this is the progression of continued claims. So these data are the total number of weeks being paid on unemployment insurance as of the end or the end of the week on August 8th. You can see that slow progression down. We want to see that continue. Here's what California looks like. So California, because of a change in social policy, actually saw some pick back up in those weekly claims in the aggregate. And now it's sliding back down again as August started. And we'll see as the economy opens up more in September, assuming we don't have another spike in cases, these data should continue to drift down as people get, A, get back to work and come off of unemployment. Uh, whether or not Congress passes an extension that keeps people Thinking about going back to work is another question and Congress is still reeling in, uh, in Washington about the timing of that. We're hearing out of Washington that in fact, they may not strike a deal by the end of the fiscal year for the federal government by September 30. And there may be a so-called continuance in which there would not be a new fiscal package until after the election. So there's some major politicking happening in Washington around the so-called HEALS Act or some derivative of it, we will see. Here's California in terms of job changes. These data are as also of August 21. This is April's surge down by industry. And then there's May and May was really the trough. The American economy troughed in April in this first round of job losses. And California was a little bit after that, about one month. And then there's the pickup in June. And those are the latest for July. 
So we have seen some recovery momentum in California. We're gonna see these same data from Marin County in just a second in contrast. But if you look to the far right, and I show you also in the middle here, the motion picture industry, because that for Los Angeles, Los Angeles still has 18% unemployment as of July. And part of that's because of a combination of tourism and uh, entertainment assets that aren't being utilized. And there's still a lot of job losses as compared to last year. So it's really in services we're still hurting. That far right-hand side is a lot of our service industries, which does affect our low-wage workers. Now, let's move on to our uh, recovery tool that we call the Recovery Index. These are the employment data as of July. And these data, again, are uh, new as of August 21. You can see that the unemployment rate for Marin County as compared to California is about 5% lower, 8.8%. Loss of the labor force is an intriguing issue, and we're watching this closely because we don't know in what form that change is. Is it discouraged workers? Is it a lack of being able to count who's lost a job? Is it a bunch of people that have retired? We don't know yet, and we may not know for some time, which is unfortunate because this is a historic change in labor force. But the number of people that are out of work that live in Marin County, which is that civilian employment change, is about 11.5%. The unemployment rate is the combination of the labor force change and those that are out of work. But Marin County still remains one of the lowest unemployment rate counties in California. That labor force shock is something to watch. Here's initial claims in comparison to some other counties. And this is through July. And you can see that there's been some major moderation. Marin County is the first installment. And these are all based on April 2010, or in a sense, the bottom of the last recession to really shows you the jump in what's happened where January and February were very similar to what's been sort of the classic post-recession world before COVID. San Mateo jumped, residents in San Mateo saw their job losses jump very quickly in March and April, and that led to unemployment in April and May. And then we've seen some moderation across the board. Sonoma County seen a little bit of a pickup. If you'll notice, there's that little bump in, January, in July and June. That suggests that Sonoma County is struggling a little bit, especially on the tourism side to get out of it. Napa is kind of a sort of quizzical anomaly there in that they also have a lot of tourism assets, but they somehow have sort of mowed through this better than Sonoma County and to a certain extent, Marin County and Napa County. And Napa County has really been a post-recession star and still seems to have a lot of that uh, momentum play paying off for them in this recession. Here's initial claims for Marin County uh, by industry, as I just showed you for California, same basic idea, retail and a lot of services hurting for those that are residents here. Now, part of that's also the professional business services. And that's likely because we do have a lot of residents in Marin County that work outside the county in professional and business services and may have lost their job on the front end. But you'll notice that has moderated from the original pop. What we don't have is continued claims by industry. We do have them in the aggregate. And continued claims in Marin County have turned a corner and people have gone back to work. But the heavy problems are in retail and generally in low wage uh, service industries that are slowly coming back as our economy slowly opens back up. Here's uh, the job losses. So those were initial claims for unemployment insurance. These are the job loss data by industry. And you will see that those have basically followed. Now, a couple of places of note is one is in transportation, warehousing, utilities, there's basically been zero loss along the entire time we've been going. Part of that is because we've switched to a home delivery model in some cases. So losses in one part of those industries have been picked up by transportation in, in terms of warehousing and delivery. And it's basically left a flat jobs environment, which is good. Manufacturing, which is the third from the left, has also had very little loss. Part of that is bioscience and life sciences in terms of biomarin and Ultragenics and other companies that have been sort of stalwart anchors in the Marin County economy on the far or on the frontier tech side, that's also paying off in terms of Marin County starting to see some recovery momentum. Let's move to housing briefly. We have been started to watch listing prices to see if we have folks that are homeowners start to put their homes up more quickly for sale with the idea that if you know the supply is rising in the housing market you may want to offer your home at a lower price to be competitive. Well, to a certain extent, there's been some counterintuition here in that we've seen prices pick up a lot, not only here in the North Bay, but also in California. And part of that's because on the demand side, a lot of demand momentum is there to purchase a home with lower interest rates and potentially having more positive momentum on the economic recovery side. People's confidence are now paying off 
for homeowners that want to sell. Marin County went up and it kind of clicked down a little bit, at least in July. But for the most part, there's been relatively positive momentum in the housing market. Now, why this is important, and we're going to see in a minute on the uh, actual post-sale side. So this is pre-home sale pricing. Post-home sale, I'm going to show you in a second. But why this is critical is because we're watching very closely if we're going to have a repeat episode of the Great Recession in housing. And a lot of housing economists do not foresee a fall down the hill like we saw in 2007 through 9 that then generated a recession. Uh, what, we try, what we're trying to do in this case is not have housing go sideways in, in the sense of having almost like a double dip recession. So we dip now. Housing has remained relatively stable for the time being. And part of that is the sort of dubious positive aspects of having a housing crisis and having low vacancy rates. Uh, we'll see if that continues to pay off for homeowners. It will not pay off for some of our lower, work, lower wage workers who are still trying to stay in rental or potentially will be farther away from gaining access to home ownership. Here are those data on the post-sale side at the median housing price level. You can see Marin County over the last year is up almost 4%. California's up a little bit more than that. Napa's up a little bit. Some of the other Bay Area and North Bay counties have more of a mixed bag effect in terms of the last year or so. But for Marin County specifically, the COVID-19 situation has not really changed the trajectory of either the prices that are for houses being supplied or for the final price in which supply meets demand. So Looking forward, most forecasts right now are for relatively low but positive percentage change in, in housing prices toward July 2021, which at least gives the inkling that supply and demand are going to walk basically hand in hand. So there's not any place in California that is booming in terms of percentage change in housing prices. But right now, there's really not a lot of counties that have a negative outlook either, because the supposition is, is that supply and demand characteristics are pretty much equal to each other. Building permits in Marin County on a 12 month rolling sum have started to take a dip. Now, this is not an anomaly to Marin County. If you look across the state, building permits have slowed down partially because of, of lack of knowing how to, in a sense, engage in the costs of a post COVID world in construction. Construction has been a place that in some counties has stayed open as a so-called essential business. And there's been in other cases where it has not. Now for Marin County, there was a time in which it was not. So that dip may be just an anomaly of that one choice. But we're watching this closely to think about the pipeline of construction for new homes. And again, thinking forward, if we turn and get out of this crisis and let's say by 2022, we're gonna be talking about a housing crisis again, 2023 and 24, almost guaranteed, if the housing market remains relatively stable. So building permits are generally a a leading in, or and no, sorry, a leading indicator of the uh, of the local economy and or the American economy. And this downturn, if it picks back up again as we go back into fall and toward the, fir uh, the first part of next year, will be a sign that developer expectations are getting better about building new homes, and that our local cities and the county see that this is one way of continuing to address a housing crisis that's still upon us. On the tourism side, we've seen some pickup and Marin County has actually been performing very, very well in terms of the simple metrics that most tourism economists watch, which are occupancy rates that then become so-called RevPAR or revenue per available room, the way that uh, hotels specifically generate their core revenue. These are also indicators of the flow of people that come into these places. So you can see that Napa County is at 42.9% as of the beginning of August or at the end of July versus 78% occupancy last year. Marin County is actually 61.5, which is relatively close to where it was last year. Uh, San Francisco is still suffering and Sonoma County has seen a really nice pickup. Now, one thing that does cloud this a little bit, unfortunately, going forward are the regional fires. So we'll see occupancy rates pick up because emergency personnel have been staying in hotel spaces and whether or not that sort of changes the way we can use these data as thinking about tourism recovery is yet to come. So we'll have to take that into account as the next few weeks and months evolve. Finally, I want to talk about a couple of things on small business side. Harvard University through its opportunity tracker is watching small businesses at the county level and looking and see which ones have closed that were there in January. So what this is, is a percentage change in county businesses that have less than 25 workers and which what percent has either stayed open or has closed. So at, at the end of the week, August 9, 2020, about 32% of those small businesses in Marin County were estimated to have closed. Temporarily or permanent, we, we don't know. 
and this is going to be a question going forward, but there's some comparison percentages there on the right column. The U.S. overall is about 19 percent. California is about 25 percent. San Francisco is about the same as Marin County. Sonoma County is a little bit less. And Napa, as I said earlier, is kind of showing some counterintuition here and is not as bad. But Marin County is a place that is a home for a lot of small businesses. So this, this estimate that is coming from kind of a big data estimate, looking at a lot of websites that would track the use of, let's say, things like Yelp uh, as a way of looking at businesses that remain open, they're estimating that Marin County is about 32% down as of the middle of August. On the commercial real estate side, the forecast, this is coming from Newmark, uh, Knight and Frank, and thanks to Hayden Ongaro for these data. It's a very mixed bag in terms of where commercial real estate is going. My contacts in commercial real estate suggest that things are slowly getting worse and you're seeing some vac vacating businesses out of uh, their current commercial real estate or some downsizing. So it could be a real rocky 12 months for office and retail for sure. Uh, industrial space is probably going to be okay, assuming that manufacturing continues to pick up, but we're going to watch probably a rent war happening throughout the Bay Area over the next 12 months. And as you can see, the under construction forecast is basically, I don't know. And that's because the environment is still very uncertain in commercial. So we're watching this closely to see if this actually tells us something more in a little bit more detail about the change in businesses. So with that, I'm now going to hand it back over to Mike, and he's going to provide you a little bit more of a complete package of what we're seeing going forward. Thanks so much, Rob. And let me just take a moment to remind all of our participants that this is being recorded, um, and we can make this available on our website within a few days, and um, we'll find out about uh, in the future being able to email this to all participants. Uh, Rob, as always, just a ton of data, a lot to absorb there. Uh, what I wanted to try to do with the last sort of few remaining minutes is now that we've got almost two quarters of economic data, we're starting to see some trends and narratives. And so Rob and I want to talk just a little bit about what we see this as meaning for Marin County. So Rob, um, you, we didn't share uh, data on sales tax revenue, but one of the key indicators that we're looking at is uh, different consumption indicators. And there are many of them out there, whether we're talking about retail sales, uh, durable goods, there's the purchasing managers index, the consumer sentiment index. There's all kinds of ways to gauge the demand side of things. And as MEF has been saying for a long time now, the recovery is really gonna be based on how demand returns. Um, and these various consumption indicators are all mixed, some up, some down. What this tells us is that this is not like a normal recession where you have a cutback in demand across the board because people generally are, don't have as much disposable income. Um, and so what that means here in Marin County is it's a kind of a case of winners and losers, uh, particularly on the retail front. If you happen to be selling things like boats or gardening equipment or bicycles, you're doing very well. In fact, you might be doing better than you've ever done before. If you happen to sell things like, uh, you know, dress clothing for work or soccer cleats for, you know, team sports, which are not happening, or even in the food service sector, you're really suffering not only a result of social policy, but some of the, uh, the perceived health risks of, you know, d conducting that activity. So again, we are seeing here in Marin County, many of our small businesses flourish and many of them uh, unfortunately fail and close. And we don't really know how to understand what's gonna happen in the future outside of the fact that as we slowly reopen and as consumers get more uh, uh, confident in going out and, and doing things, we expect that will be the main predictor of uh, economic activity picking up. The second thing is you may have noticed in one of the slides that Rob presented is that Marin County's job loss was significantly worse than the state. Um, normally, if you look at economic indicators, Marin County will be doing better than the state. That is everything from median incomes to educational attainment, uh, even to the unemployment rate. Uh, this is one area where we're not doing as, uh, better than the state, and that is be directly a result of the industry mix that we have here. As many of you know, we have a lot of personal services businesses here. Those, unfortunately, have been hit the hardest, and that is one of the main reasons that you're seeing job loss more acute here in Marin County relative to the state. Um, and, and of course, that job loss has been concentrated in, in low wage earners. Um, and so this starts to present a social problem for Marin County because not only are we losing those jobs at a fast clip, 
not only are those the businesses that are closed, maybe temporarily, maybe for good, um, we are going to find ourselves with a surplus of labor that is relatively lower skilled. And so we need to start thinking about what is going to happen uh, what kind of programs are we going to have to get those people back to work? What kind of retraining or reskilling are they going to need? Uh, because as those jobs that they have lost, a good portion of them are not going to be coming back. Um, now, again, some of you may have seen the publication that we put out yesterday um, highlighting something that's referred to as a K-shaped economy. Um, this is a situation where some in the economy have, re, um, have, have done well. Uh, and kept their jobs done well, or maybe if they lost a job, they got it back and they're on an upward trajectory. Uh, and then some have lost their jobs, have lost wages and continue, things continue to get worse. Um, this becomes a real challenge here in Marin County because we already have some underlying inequality issues, certainly income inequality issues. And so this is something that we're gonna need to watch going forward. How do we get our lower wage workers back to work and in jobs that can provide decent incomes. And then finally, we hear a lot of people talking about pivots, businesses pivoting in order to uh, deal with the environment that we're in. But what we're starting to see are some real differences between what's a pivot and what's actually a simple adaptation. So I would venture to say that when a restaurant moves to providing takeout uh, in a way to just keep their doors open and survive, that's not a pivot. That's an adaptation to the environment that has been imposed upon them through the virus and through closings. A pivot is when a business is actually taking its business model and changing it in order to do either a new business or to totally change what they're doing. So I'll give you a couple examples of that that we're seeing here in the Bay Area. So many of you can remember those things called the Google buses, these buses that were uh, shuttling tech workers in downtown San Francisco to their jobs in the South Bay. Um, one of those companies, which owns something like 20 buses, they obviously are not going to be going back to that type of business. So they actually found a way to convert their buses to delivery vehicles, and they've signed a large contract with Amazon. That is a pivot. Uh, fitness and fit, the fitness sector is another one that's really suffered now. Yoga studios, gyms not being able to be open. There was a big shift online to yoga or fitness classes online, which is something that was already occurring. But let's just say that Marin County businesses did that. Um, now, those fitness instructors, it's, it's too difficult now just to capture somebody's attention and dollars for a yoga class that the entire world is offering for free. So what you've seen a lot of yoga instructors do is actually create a new type of community where yes, they will lead people through a yoga session, but they've actually created this entire online community that people are uh, uh, spending money to subscribe to that includes discussions of health, uh, diet, uh, yes, there's a yoga class in there, um, a travel eventually when it comes back. And so they really, that is an example of, of a pivot that really happened by necessity. These businesses, um, in order to maintain some level of economic activity, have totally changed the way they've done business. And I think we're going to have to see that here in Marin County. All of us know that, the, that our retail sector was already under pressure from online consumption. Online consumption has just exploded in the last couple of months. Um, and so that's a reality that we have to live with. So many participants here are from chambers of commerce or uh, elected officials that have businesses that are suffering. When we talk about pivots, it might have to be something more aggressive than, than we're used to. So we're about up on time. Um, there are some questions in the chat that had to do with commercial real estate and others. And hopefully Rob was able to answer those. Um, what I'll do is talk with Rob about how we can get these questions answered maybe in an email format and then we'll be happy to email that to all the participants. So um, that's what I have on our side. We're up on 30 minutes. Rob, any last words? No, that's it. We're, probably, we're likely to see more momentum in recovery if the state remains in an opening mode and the U.S. economy can continue to move forward. The election is going to be something to watch very closely in terms of equity markets and how, in a sense, we enter 2021 on a positive note. Great. Um, thanks so much, Rob. Uh, and thanks you to all of you for participating. Um, I want to note that we had 81 people participating this morning. That's the highest number. So we definitely appreciate that you um, 
extending this invite to your professional networks and colleagues uh, to increase this so we all have a good understanding of what's happening in Marin. And with that, I'll thank you again for participating. Have a great day and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks.